to help you. It's not going to help me fill my car up. So, but I think long, his long-term energy plans uh, are, are what's important. He wants to reduce our dependence on foreign oil. You know, we all we've been saying that for 20 years, but the way you do it is by investing in green energies. And you, when you do that, you're also going to create new jobs. You're, you're going to put people back to work. You're going to get people to build solar panels and wind wind turbines and, and all these things that are going to create the kind of energy we need. Uh, you know, he's, he's looking into bridge fuels, you know, such as ethanol, and we are going to have to use coal for a little longer. He's realistic that we're not going to be able to switch tomorrow. But if you start, you have to start making the investments, you know, because you can't leave it to the oil companies. You know, they have, again, another quarter of record profits, but they're less than 1% are they investing in new technology, new, new green energy. So we're going to have to, from, a, from our level, to push that. Yeah, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. My short plan. People are suffering and this time. Right. Everybody. Right. And everybody is looking for short plan with the plants. To open the, to open the reservation, the reserve, oil, whatever kind of social issue. What is the right, right, right. He's talking about looking into that. I, mean, I don't think he hasn't committed to any one strategy. I think he's, he, he, he talked about uh, looking into opening up uh, oil reserves for a short period of time. But you know, he, he wants to make sure that we have long, sustainable change. Because even if it goes down short term, you know, then we go back up. It could go back up even higher. If, and then, you know, I know that this is a little broader base, but, you know, a lot of the oil prices are the instability of overseas. You know, so if we start drawing down our troops, and there's a little more stability in Iraq, and we concentrate on Afghanistan, and we engage Syria and Iran and have them, you know, put diplomatic pressure, I think, you know, then you'll start to see that, you know, it won't be $114 a barrel. But I, I understand what you're saying. You know, there's, there's other things he's looking at. The tax credits, you know, they're, they're not going to be immediate in, in the fact that you probably already filed your taxes. But, you know, it's, that's the problem with the politics. You know, there's not too many things that you can do to gimmick prices, you know, if, if that aren't going to hurt, you know, later on. So he's, he's, you have to look at it kind of at a global solution. Uh, that's my wife. She's, 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 Said it, but yeah, he wants, you know, as you said, we have these record profits. He wants to tax, you know, increase the tax on these oil companies and put the burden on them to, you know, to lower prices. You know, the way, there's so much speculation going on with oil. I mean, the, the Saudis set the price just based on what they want to set, or not just the Saudis, but you know, them and others. So we're going to have to address the situation overseas and become less dependent there because we're really subject to their will right now. There's not, you know, there's. There's not really much we can, we can, you know, President Bush can go over there and say, please, I think a couple months ago, he went over and said, please lower that, you know, oil for a few months for us because we're hurting. That's really where, where we are right now. We're stuck and we're dependent, and we got to get out of that situation. I, don't, I know that's not, I'm try, I hope that helps a little bit. I know Barack Obama is a lawyer. He is. He has a strategic plan. Yeah. Not making them import their own oil, give them the capacity to build, you know, build refineries there, and, and actually profit from their own exports, you know. But that, that's that's part of the problem. But I think his worldview, large large scale towards the whole world, will be like, hey, we're, America is a global power. We're a leader. We can set, we can show the path. We can lead on things like renewable fuels and energy, and our foreign policy. We, we don't we don't endorse torture. We make a statement day one. Guantanamo is shut down. You know that we're going to treat people with respect. We're going to we're going to respect the Geneva Conventions. You know we're going to respect the international rule of law. We're going to prop up and, and as one of the strongest member nations of the UN, we're going to get we're going to give more we're going to give more deference and more power to them to the Security Council. I think one of the things that's happened during the Bush administration is he subjugated the UN to 
an advisory capacity, if that. You know, and you know, you have, when you have your UN ambassador John Bolton saying that this is, you know, the UN is just a, a joke and it's not really needed. I think that really hurts, you know, international efforts to come to consensus, and that's what we need to do. Uh, the United States can be a leader, but it's not a bully. It's going to work with other nations for the greater good. You know, and I, I think that's his, that's his view. Let's, we, we have time. Yes, thank you. We have two questions. We have four or five. What we're going to do, let me get on the mic for a second. Let's all thank William for giving us his time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to continue this discussion right now because there are other representatives. I've also campaigned for Obama. Others in this room have campaigned for Obama. We can talk about Ardena much more detail. Okay. Yeah. But for William, what he's here to do is let you know that if you need anything, if you have more questions about Obama, you contact him, you contact us. That's why he came. And, and we're ready to start this dialogue. We're going to have more fundraisers. We're going to have more events like this where we can have Obama's people and come and ask questions. So even though we're not getting as much time as we'd like right now, let's plan on doing this again. And, and you know, make your decision. Learn. Ask questions. This is part of the process. So, Thank you to William and thank you to everyone else for your questions and your patience. And uh, we're going to let him go. Oh, oh, he wants to say. No, one more thing. <laughs> Barack loves these kind of meetings and does them all the time. If, he was a, if we could multiply them by a thousand, he'd do them everywhere. But it's important that the type of politics this is, asking questions, engaging in the democracy, that's what he's all about. He wants to, you know, and I, I think that comes across in his speeches if you guys have seen him speak. He doesn't talk to you like you're an idiot. He doesn't say we're going to work hard and we're going to fight. You know, I mean, he, he gets a little more deep than that. And he talks about the breadth and depth of the situation. And I, I, I'm very excited to see the Eritrean community here in D.C. Is, is thinking about these things. And, and I hope you push your friends to support Barack. And like I said, we can bring people in and have this continuing conversation. So I thank you for your time. Um, we have a representative from Brian Moran's office. As you know, Brian Moran is a state delegate for Virginia. He has been a strong supporter of the Eritrean community for years. Um, and also his brother, Congressman Jim Moran, who's in the House, they've both been uh, very responsive to our needs locally, but also they've made themselves available to, to answer questions. So Andrew's going to make a couple of remarks. Uh, Brian Moran is running a very important race for governorship in Virginia. And so, just a reminder, registration forms, you're not leaving without filling out that form and donating money at the door. So, let me hand it over to Andrew. Thank you. I, I'm here, <coughs> excuse me, Brian would like to be here himself, except he's uh, busy uh, shopping, actually. Tomorrow is his son B-Man's uh, birthday, so he and his wife are busy at Party City and all over trying to uh, entertain uh, six and seven year olds. But um, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to share this time with you and to discuss uh, somebody who is not only my boss, but he's also my very good friend, and he's your good friend as well. His brother, Jim Moran, on a side note, is not only a huge supporter of the Eritrean community in the U.S. House of Representatives, but he also happens to be a committed Obama superdelegate. So that's uh, very, very uh, good news, and we're very, very happy. <laughs> very, very hard to, uh, to make Obama the uh, nominee. Um, just a few words uh, about Brian. One of Brian's uh, signature initiatives uh, in Virginia is education and children. And I think that that is, and he's inspired by the example of the Eritrean community, by the, by the families and, the, and the, the, way that the, the, the way that the community focuses so heavily on education and, and affection and the importance of family. And he's just very grateful for that example. And uh, I, was, uh, I, I was very happy to be invited here uh, to represent Brian because Brian reached out and individually called our good friend Hot Talk here and, and wants the support of the uh, Eritrean community. He wants the Eritrean community on his side. He is on your side. And I just hope that you guys know that if we work very hard over the next uh, 19 months, then the Commonwealth of Virginia can stay blue. Barack Obama will be president. And in the White House and in the Governor's Mansion in Richmond, who will be a very, very good friend to the Eritrean community and the community as a whole. So thank you very much for your commitment, your hard work, 
And I look forward to working with each and every one of you over the course of the next 19 months to make Brian Moran the next governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia. I don't know where to summarize, but uh, uh, I would just like to, to thank the uh, sponsors of uh, today's event, uh, especially the restaurants that, that donated the food. Uh, Salam Restaurant, uh, Highlight here. Let's give them a round of applause. Uh,